what's happening right now coming off of a stellar stretch of weather over the holiday weekend, but it is going to start feeling a lot more like summer starting tomorrow. Paula. Hey, Ben, look at all these cans around me. I know it looks like you missed one heck of a party, but what you're really seeing are cans, 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 hope and generosity, 10 cents and one can at a time. Karen, I'm going to explain. I think you're going to love this story. All right, thank you very much, Paula. Also ahead, an industrial accident at a local General Motors plant. What went wrong and how the victims are doing right now? Up first, another outburst in court from the man accused in a terror attack at Flint's airport. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Karen Drew. First at four, the hearing took just eight minutes, but the suspect in the attack at Flint's airport still made quite an impression. Moore Fatui was in federal court a few hours ago in Flint. He's accused of stabbing an airport police officer in the neck. The officer survived. Fatui is 49 years old. He's a Canadian citizen. He's charged with committing an act of violence at an international airport and interfering with airport security. Today he said Allah Akbar three times as he entered court, but then stood mute as the judge entered a not guilty plea. If convicted, Fatui could face life in prison. The police officer you see right there, Lieutenant Jeff Neville, he is recovering and he appeared in a 4th of July parade yesterday. We're also tracking the legal battle involving more than 100 Iraqi immigrants arrested last month by Immigration and Customs Enforcement, or ICE. Today, attorneys for the immigrants were back in front of U.S. District Court Judge Mark Goldsmith. The issue today, who has jurisdiction in the case, the federal judge or the immigration court? They also want to keep a stay in place, which is preventing their deportation, arguing the immigrants would be in danger if sent back to Iraq. Right now, that stay is set to expire July 10th. So far, no word on when to expect a ruling. Three workers are hospitalized after an industrial accident at the General Motors Detroit Hamtramck assembly plant. That's on the city's east side. The Detroit Fire Department says the workers were doing some maintenance when a valve popped off a filter pump around 10 this morning. The 23 year old suffered some cuts to his face and two others are being treated for possible steam injuries. We're told none of those injuries are life threatening. A down transformer is to blame for multiple small fires on Detroit's east side. The first fire started just before 5 this morning on Spencer near Outer Drive and Van Dyke. Approximately 30 people temporarily lost power after that transformer caused multiple garages to catch fire. Luckily, no one was hurt. Oh, I guess you could say we've been on a lucky streak when it comes to the weather the past few days. Really beautiful out there. So let's keep this going if we can, Ben. Yeah, and so much harder to go back to work when you got weather like this, Karen, but it is still fantastic outside. Temperatures have yet to hit the average mark in Metro at 81. It's actually a little bit warmer further north in Port Huron at 82. Uh, some higher clouds in our south zone, keeping temperatures just a little bit muted there. But tomorrow it looks like summer's going to sneak in here at least for a day. Our best shot at rain in the upcoming forecast is going to be Friday. We'll talk timing on that and the weekend looks like a winter. Maybe it's just as nice as what we went through in the last few days. We'll check that out in your seven day forecast coming up. Karen. All right, thank you, Ben. You are looking at live pictures right now. President Donald Trump just landed in Poland as he arrives in Europe for some high stakes meetings. This is the live picture from Warsaw. The president still on Air Force One. His second trip abroad will highlight major foreign policy changes. He's stopping in Poland before heading to Germany for the G20 summit. Our Kimberly Gill is in the newsroom this afternoon. And Kim, the president is heading to Europe, but North Korea has to be on his mind today. Yeah, you'd think so, Karen. Good afternoon to you. Tensions with North Korea have grown considerably just in the past 24 hours after the U.S. revealed that country did indeed test an intercontinental ballistic missile that's capable of reaching the United States. That's a key milestone in this simmering standoff. Now, North Korea just released new photos of leader Kim Jong-un inspecting a missile, apparently the same missile that was fired in that latest test. The broadcaster also showed photos of Kim Jong-un watching and celebrating this launch. North Korea continues to challenge the Trump administration with more and more missile tests. However, experts say North Korea has not been able to create a small nuclear warhead that can fit into a rocket. Meanwhile, the saber rattling uh, picked up steam in South Korea. That country unveiled a simulation video of the military countermeasures that it could take 
in response to any action from North Korea. The video shows a missile being dropped onto the Ministry of People's Armed Forces in the North Korean capital. Now, President Trump uh, will be looking for international support to um, contain North Korea when he gets to the G20 summit later today, but he's already facing potentially tense talks with German Chancellor Angela Merkel and his first face-to-face -to -face meeting with Russian President Vladimir Putin. So a whole lot going on, Karen. We will, of course, continue to follow it over the next few days, and we will keep you posted on it all. Back to you. All right. Thank you very much, Kim. Appreciate that. First at four, we're on top of other stories making headlines all around the world today. Let's start with this cell phone video from a pipeline explosion in China. A blast killed five people, injured about 89 others. The state media is reporting the explosion happened as workers were fixing pipelines. They've launched an investigation into finding out exactly what sparked that blast. 14 of those injured are in serious condition this afternoon. Vietnam is planning to ban motorcycles from the streets of Hanoi by 2030. The government says there are more than 5 million registered motorcycles and 500,000 cars on city streets. That's just too many for the city to handle. Motorcycle riders aren't happy. They say it will be impossible to ban that transportation they've grown up with. And they say the city has a poor public transportation system. Heavy rains have triggered floods and landslides in the far northeastern region of India. So far, at least 20 deaths have been reported. Nearly 400,000 have left their flooded homes after a river poured over its banks. India is in the middle of the monsoon season, which runs from June through September. A heat wave over in Rome has sparked a battle over the city's drinking fountains, also called Big Noses. They offer fresh water on street corners all over the city, and residents and tourists alike rely on these fountains to grab a quick drink. A severe drought is forcing the company to close a small portion of the fountains each day. Some tourists suggest they use taps that can be closed to save water instead of turning them off completely. It's a labor of love for a family in Macomb Township collecting thousands and thousands of aluminum cans for a very special reason. Their little boy wants his own service dog, and that wish comes with some sizable roadblocks. Let's bring in Paula Tutman. She caught up with this family and joins us now live this afternoon with their story. Hi, Paula. Hey, Karen. You, cans and bottles. And I got to say, I'm really touched by the neighbors in this community. First of all, take a look at this. This is just today's haul, and it is absolutely amazing. They're bringing up checks. They're dropping off cans. Come here, Jackson. Come here. And they're all for this little boy right here. Say hello. Say hello. There you go. Good job. His name is Jackson. He is three, and if cuteness could be placed on a meter, <laughs> Northern Macomb would be pegging in the red every single day. But he also has challenges, cerebral palsy. It's painful because um, people treat him different. People don't understand. Um, you know, CP has many factors. CP isn't just about, you know, mobility. It's about behavioral issues. It's about the poor child doesn't sleep at night. Jackson needs a service dog. He doesn't like his walker. He feels contained. He, um, he feels like he gets in the way, as you can see, and it's actually becoming quite dangerous. And there's a long waiting list to get into a mobility dog program. And dogs aren't generally granted until a child is at least 10. And so Jackson's parents are going the private route. One catch, the cost is a minimum of $15,000 for the dog and the training. Jackson is one of five children, and this is a single salary household. Insurance does not cover many things, believe it or not. Um, it doesn't cover mobility dogs. It doesn't cover service dogs. So the family had an idea, collect cans. Hi, Mama. They sent flyers around the neighborhood and have been collecting cans for their deposits since Thursday. Hey, there's a bag over there. We've returned 17,000 cans already since Thursday. Already. They must hate seeing you coming. <gasps> they haven't said anything yet. A typical day collecting is overwhelming. Start with the kindness. Are you excited to get your dog? What's your doggy's name going to be? I mean, it's just heartwarming to see the support for Jackson. Have a good day. And the one immutable fact that their neighbors drink a lot of soda pop and beer 
and are incredibly giving. We're all family around the neighborhood, so we're like, let's help them out. So I just want you to take a look at these cans, Karen. So they think this is about 17,000 cans. They, they're probably with this haul at about $6,000. Uh, they're going to continue this uh, until they get the money they need. The dog is expected in August. And you know what? Just in case you've got some cans and it just looks like 10 cents, don't throw it away. I'm gonna put a link on my website. Jackson actually has a blog so you can connect with his family and find out how you can join this drive for this little boy, but this is impressive, Karen. So impressive, what a wonderful neighborhood. They really are like a family all around Jackson. They do. All right, well, we will yeah, stay on it top. Is. It's very, very nice. All right, thank you, Paula. We'll stay on top of his story, that's for sure. Still ahead, first at four, we're getting some rare insight into a celebrity breakup. The rap star Madonna, I should say the rap star and Madonna, and why he stopped dating her. That's one of the stories that's trending. Also, this police chase is making news across America. What the driver did that surprised police. I'll show you how police finally caught him. At first, killed in the line of duty. The shocking death of a police officer under investigation this afternoon. We'll have an update next. The Coming up all new on Local 4 News at 5 and 6. There's some of the most popular apps out there for adults and for kids, but what's hidden inside could make it easy for bad guys to track you down. All right, thank you, Hank. Also, we continue following that tragedy out of New York where an NYPD officer was shot and killed in what's being called an ambush attack. The officer, 48-year-old Mia Sosis Familia, was sitting in a marked command vehicle with her partner when she was shot in the head through the car window. The mayor spoke about the shooting this morning, talking about how Familia will be remembered. She was on duty, serving this city, protecting people, doing what she believed in and doing the job she loved. The suspect has been identified as 34-year-old Alexander Bonds. He was shot and killed by officers at the scene. We're also tracking other stories from across America. First at four, police in Fort Pierce, Florida say an argument between a man and woman led to an explosion at an apartment complex. They say the man loaded his car with four tanks of propane gas and then drove right into that building. The couple fought earlier and police believe he was targeting five people inside the apartment building, including a three-year-old child. The driver died. The intended victims were all able to escape, but more than a dozen people are homeless because of the crime. A police chase in California came to a smashing end, even though the driver was surprisingly polite while trying to make his getaway. Officers say the driver actually used his turn signal before he got onto an exit ramp and almost stopped at a stop sign. Eventually, they decided enough was enough, and one officer hit the bumper of the car, causing him to lose control and run into a street light. Officers approached with guns drawn, but the driver surrendered peacefully. I have to admit, I don't think I've ever seen anyone or heard of people using turn signals in a police chase. Everything moves slower in California, doesn't it? <laughs> a little laid back. All right, Ben is here and a, a gorgeous holiday weekend, and it looks like it's going to be a nice rest of the week. Yeah, we've got at least tomorrow uh, with dry conditions, and then we're going to see some much-needed rain, hopefully, by Friday, but those temperatures just look fantastic out there again this afternoon. Humidity, not a worry of ours. We're at 81 in Metro. Notice the cooler numbers are down here in our south zone, 78 in Monroe, uh, 82 in Adrian, and then you get north of Detroit, and those numbers just a couple degrees warmer because they've got a little bit more in the way of sunshine because the clouds have been hanging out uh, really across the southern half of the area. They're high clouds, not necessarily all that thin, so they are blocking a little bit of the sun, uh, but in areas that are north of Detroit, those temperatures about five, six degrees degrees warmer than what we were looking at yesterday at this time. So you can see on the satellite image those high clouds that have started to move in. We're also keeping an eye on a, land, a line of thunderstorms, which is on the other side of Lake Michigan. That should stay away from us. We're looking at dry conditions tonight and through much of tomorrow, too. Uh, it looks like about Thursday evening that could be our first chance of getting wet. And so far, this has really been all that we've seen uh, in a good chunk of the area. These very thin, wispy, cirrus clouds, what we uh, commonly called mare's tails uh, hanging out. This is from Hamtramck. Ellen shot this on storm pins. Appreciate that. 
And as we get into tomorrow night, that looks like our first chance of seeing wet weather. We will start out tomorrow with generally uh, mostly sunny skies and then in the evening hours on Thursday, better chances of thunderstorms start showing up just before sunset in our north zone and you'll see that here in our forecast map that should stay away from most of us. But the later we get into the overnight, we could see a few more scattered thunderstorms again. Not everybody's going to get wet and then in the afternoon could be enough instability to fuel some more in the way of thunderstorms on Friday. Fingers crossed that we get some good rain out of this because a lot of us do need it. 63 is where we're going tonight. Sky's mainly clear, very seasonable for this time of year. But look at these high temperatures tomorrow. We're just going to slowly sneak a little bit of summer in here. As we start in our metro zone, 87 in the city, 90 in Livonia and Southfield. There will be a couple 90s in our south zone too as we get into tomorrow afternoon, probably right in the middle uh, around Blissfield and Dundee. Slightly cooler on either side of that in the mid 80s. West zone high temperatures, a little bit on the uh, sultry side, upper 80s, close to 90. In fact, could hit that mark in Canton and north zone highs tomorrow looking generally in the mid 80s, maybe just a little bit cooler out here towards the lake with 82 in Lexington. And that is really our best chance of thunderstorms and our best chance of rain in the forecast. There's another one as we get into Tuesday. It's a slider shot. But after we get that humidity to spike here on Friday and see those uh, thunderstorms roll through, it's a pretty nice weekend ahead. Upper 70s to around 80 with low humidity and plenty of sun for that stretch. Karen. All right, thank you, Ben. Still ahead, a rap star's jailhouse letter to Madonna. His apology for breaking up with her because she's white. Up first, it's a legendary mystery. Whatever happened to the daring pilot, Amelia Earhart? Some investigators say they have new evidence that shows where she ended up. We're back with a long time mystery. Did Amelia Earhart survive when her plane disappeared back in 1937? Investigators from the History Channel found this never seen before photo. They claim it shows Earhart and her navigator alive in the Marshall Islands. Those islands were under Japanese control at the time. Japan has always denied knowing what happened to Earhart, but facial recognition experts say the photo could be evidence she was on the Marshall Islands, at least for a time. In trending stories today, a letter from the late rap star Tupac Shakur to Madonna will be up for auction a little later this month. TMZ says that letter shows he broke up with Madonna because she's white. The two dated back in the 90s, three years before his death. TMZ says Tupac wrote, quote, for you to be seen with a black man wouldn't in any way jeopardize your career. If anything, it would make you seem that much more open and exciting. But for me, he writes, at least in my previous perception, I felt due to my image, I would be letting down half of the people who made me what I thought I was. He also apologized, saying he never meant to hurt her. The starting bid for the letter is $100,000. Excitement is building today for the Will and Grace reunion, of course, right here on NBC. An election video went viral last year, and now the entire cast is returning for a television reunion. The network just unveiled a new promo showing the stars, including Jack and Karen, up to their old tricks. Take a look. Grace. Will and Grace premieres September 28th at 9 p.m. right here on Local 4. Karen didn't have a martini in her hand, so. That is very surprising. Maybe it's a new little storyline we don't know about. Could be. I don't think it's going to change. All right, still ahead. First at four, what is your favorite restaurant, your favorite salon? A big competition is getting started right now, and it's time to make your vote count. Painkillers and over the counter medications, we take them to feel better. But what happens if your pets get into them? They weren't sure if he'd make it through the night. Yep. I always like to say that dogs and cats are not small humans. Important information for you, your family, and your pet. Tonight at 11. Try